Dr. Rashna Singh, a radiation oncologist at the Cancer Institute, New Jersey. Thank you for being here. Of course. My first question is, would you explain for me what it means to be a radiation oncologist? So there are three disciplines in oncology and cancer treatment, and they are generally chemotherapy, which is systemic. It's medicine that goes usually through the vein or orally. Um, there are surgical oncologists who remove tumors and satellite tumors and things like that. And then there are the radiation oncologists, and we are sort of almost jack of all trades. We do organ preservation for different tumor types. Um, we radiate tumors that are inoperable, and we radiate patients who are in pain secondary to tumors. So what inspired you to become a doctor and go into this field? Well, there are multiple things. I went into medical school sort of wanting to be a pediatrician because lots of women who are young and it's fun and children are great. Um, but I actually had a nephew, a second cousin, who was diagnosed at the age of 11 with a malignant brain tumor. And he was, a, he was incurable at that time. And the only discipline that really made him feel better after surgery and chemotherapy and all that was radiation therapy to his brain. And I had a lot of talks with him. And I was a junior in medical school. I was in third year in medical school. And um, he was very honest about what worked and what didn't work and what made him feel better and what didn't make him feel better. And that was very moving. So that was part of it. And then I wanted to be a surgeon for a long time. And I had a male surgical oncologist sit me down after doing a rotation with him. He was very nice and very supportive. And I still talk to him to this day. But he said, you know, he also has a daughter. And he said, you know, I think you'd be really good, but I think you want a life. And, you know, my radiation oncology friends, they have a lot of a life. I don't have as much of a life. So it kind of offered me what I wanted to do, which is help cancer patients and sort of, you know, have time for a family, which I think a lot of women are looking for that kind of balance. What kind of education do you need to become a radiation oncologist? Well, you need a medical degree. So you need to go to medical school, and then you do one year of general medicine or surgery or transitional medicine, which is a combination. And then you do five years of residency total, so you have four specialty years of radiation training. Can you describe what your typical work day is like? Um, my typical work day is office-based, generally. A lot of radiation oncologists also do implant therapy, which is done in the operating room. I don't tend to do that much here, um, but I come in and I work three days a week, so I'm very lucky. But two of those days are dedicated to new and ongoing patient care, so patients who've recently been treated or are going to start treatment, or have just been diagnosed and need to discuss things. And then one full day of my week is dedicated to patients who are actually on treatment for different things. Um, and we troubleshoot them. So we see them once a week, usually on Thursdays. And our treatment day starts at 8 and ends at 4.30. And so it just depends where my patients fall on that schedule, but those are generally my hours. And on Thursdays, we see our patients on treatment, we assess them, we see what they need to get through the weekend when they're not with us without too many problems because quality of life is very important in this discipline for the patients. Um, and then I start all over the week after. So that's, that's typical, typical kind of work week. What is the most rewarding part of your job? You know, it's, it's funny because people ask their, people routinely say, oh my God, what you do is so depressing. And I totally don't think it's completely depressing. I think we help a tremendous number of patients either feel better if we can't cure them. Or we have a very, very high cure rate. We actually have the highest cure rate out of all three oncologic specialties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we see all sorts of patients. We see lung cancer patients and brain cancer patients and breast cancer patients and benign tumor patients, patients with big keloids that are ugly, that they have resected and then we treat. Um, we see children, not in this office, but in our other offices. We see people who are as young as 20, who are as my most recent oldest patient is 96 and he did amazingly well. So I find it really fun to talk to people. I find it really fun to make people feel better. And you know, a lot of what radiation is, is dose planning and trying to deliver dose to the organs that are intact while sparing the surrounding organs from getting significant dose. So it's kind of a little bit artsy, which sounds super nerdy, but it is. It's, you know, you go in and you're designing things. So there is a bit of an art to it as well. Um, and I think it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me from being bored in my job. You know, I don't just do one thing. I do multiple things at the same job. So it keeps you mentally stimulated and it keeps you emotionally fulfilled. 
um, you get involved with people, but you know, in the end, it reminds you that you're human and that you know you might have a bad day because someone had a bad day, but you come back and you help somebody else. So it's it's fun. It's really fun what I do. What would you say is the most challenging part of your job? Well, it's cancer treatment. So we see a lot of people when they're the most vulnerable that they've ever been. And so you have to be emotionally pretty solid. You know, people talk about, you know, doctors being callous or uncaring, which I guess some doctors are, but generally I think we all have big defense mechanisms so that we can stay objective. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to, to convince someone that they're going to be okay. It's hard to discuss with someone who's not going to be okay what it's going to be like and what the options are. Um, and you lose patients. You do. Um, and that's the worst part. You know, um, it happens though. And I think radiation oncologists are a little different in that we kind of recognize that, you know, a patient's life is a road and it can be long, hopefully, or maybe short. But as, as the physicians that we are, we, we try and make it as smooth as possible. So quality of life for the patient is very important to us um, in this field. And so I think if I, that's what I try to remember. You know, is this really going to help you or is this going to make you feel horrible and not help you? Or are you going to feel a little not so great because you're going to undergoing treatment, but you're going to be feeling a lot better in the long run? Um, and so these are treatment decisions that we make every day. Um, sometimes they're easier than others, but it does keep you on your toes. Um, but it is it can be emotionally draining. It can. But we do have a low burnout rate because I think we do have lots of success stories as well. What skills are required in your position? Well, they're the emotional skills, right, which most doctors need. Um, you have to be pretty good with your hands. You have to be good at physics, which is kind of weird. So we're kind of engineer doctors, um, which I think a lot of my friends in college would tell you is kind of amusing because I was never really good at physics. Um, but it's applied physics, so that's fine. Um, you have to like people. Hands down, you should not be a doctor if you do not like people because all you do is see people and they generally complain because they're not feeling well. You know, you don't really go see your doctor when you're just feeling awesome. Um, so you have to like people. You have to be good at math. You have to be conscientious. You have to be super picky because you're the quality gate between like okay treatment and great treatment. And that depends on the doctor. You know, some are pickier than others, but I think the ones that are the pickiest are the best. Are there a lot of women in your field? There are a fair, fair amount of women. Medicine now is pretty much 51% women and 49% men. And in radiation oncology, because of lifestyle issues, um, and there are several disciplines, radiation oncology is kind of under the radar. Nobody really knows what we do until they meet us. But, you know, the traditional good lifestyle disciplines tend to be germ, dermatology, um, ophthalmology, radiology, and everybody forgets about radiation oncology. We don't like to brag about it because there are enough of us in the world. But um, I do think it's very attractive for women um, who really want to make a difference and, you know, want to have a family and want to have a, a life outside the office, which can be difficult in some of the disciplines that we have. Was this the job that you always wanted to do? I think it would help my mom to know that I said yes because she still doesn't understand why I do this. Um, she's like, you could have been a dermatologist and, like, you know, you wouldn't worry about people so much. But I do think, yes, and I always tell people, um, if I had to do this all over again, I don't know if I would necessarily do medicine all over again, but if I was doing medicine all over again, this is what I would do. So, yeah. How did you find out about this job? So this is a funny story. So I went to Rutgers Medical School, which was known as Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. And when you're second year, so you do your first year is all basic science and physiology and things like this. Your second year, they, like, let you loose into the hospital at some point. So... To prepare you, you do the introduction of physical diagnosis, and you really familiarize yourself with physical exam and symptoms and, you know, different instruments, and you rotate through all the different specialties, pulmonary, cardiac, gynecology, pediatrics, and you have a mentor. You're assigned a mentor. Generally, everybody gets a cardiologist or a pulmonologist. In Rutgers, um, New Brunswick, which is where I was, you would either be at the main hospital in New Brunswick or they'd send you to Princeton Hospital, which is right here. And you get a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, someone who has physiology background. Well, I got a radiation oncologist who turned out later to be my neighbor when I was a grown-up real doctor. And 
I was sitting with my friends with my little assignment sheet, and I was like, I, I don't know what this person does. I have no idea. And they're like, well, I guess you're going to find out. So I went down, and I met him, and he took me for coffee. He's like, well, I have 20 minutes. Let's go get coffee. We'll talk. And it turns out he took time off between college and medical school to be on Broadway, and he had three daughters of his own and was meeting his wife for lunch. And I was like, well, I don't know what this guy does, but I want to do this. This, he was super happy, super jovial, really big people person. And he set up through that semester long course, different patients with different sites of disease for me to interview and examine. And it was really cool. And everybody else is like, oh yeah, I hung out in the ICU and I saw an EKG and I was meeting people and I was doing different exams. And I really like my mentor, and so it kind of piqued my interest, and that was when I was a second year, and then I met and went through, I didn't meet my nephew, but I kind of went through with him, his disease, and sort of was discussing it with my mentor, and then he was like, you should, you should do this. You would be really good at this. This is like right up your alley, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it, and I was told by one of our deans, who's pediatric, um, nephrologist, I think she was, married to a medical oncologist. She said, you're never going to find a job. You only need like four of these people in the, in the state. So you sure you want to do this? You could be a surgeon. And I was like, no, I think I'm going to do this. And she called me when I was a senior resident. So like six to eight years later, six years later. And she said, I have to apologize to you because my husband now says that he should have been a radiation oncologist. And would you come back and speak to our student body? when you're in town. And I said, I would love to do that. So in the end, it, it was positive. It worked out for me. That's how I found out about it. <laughs> Did you have any role models growing up? Oh, my mom it was a huge role model because she was born and raised in India. She's the youngest of four children. My grandfather was the dean of the medical school in Bombay. And my mother studied French in college because he didn't really want a doctor for a daughter. She got married to a very supportive man. My dad came to this country, didn't know a soul had never washed a dish, had never made a bed, had never cooked a meal, and learned how to do all that, had a couple of children, and my dad said to her, the youngest is gonna go to school one day, what do you wanna do? She had no idea, she had no direction, not a ton of support from her own family. And she decided to go back to school with computers, because that's what all her friends were doing. And she retired after 30 years, she was at TCNJ, she was head of academic computing, and now she's a professional volunteer and she heads up, you know, the main chapter of Rotary. She's the president, she's the president of the Arts Council, she does all these things. And um, totally out of her element, she came home from the first day at DeVry, that's where she went, and she was crying. She was 35. And my dad's like, what happened? It was terrible. And she said, the professor made everybody stand up by age, and I just stood up when he said 29 because I was the oldest in the class, and I was the last one, and I didn't want anyone to know I was over 30. And then she studied really hard for three years, graduated top of her class, and was recruited by everybody, and went to work for the academic institutions because she knew we were going to go to college, and she would get a tuition break. It's pretty cool. Do you have any advice for girls interested in this career or other STEM careers? Yeah. So, don't listen to boys because you're going to be smarter than anyone. So I tell my own daughter. Um, enjoy science because it rules everything in the universe. Try and get to the bottom of it. And try and do your best. That's it. And for my last question, what else would you tell girls when they're thinking about their future? Be realistic about wanting a family. If you really want one, find something that fits with your lifestyle. Um, and if you find something you really love, everything else will follow. You know, you'll make it work. Well, thank you, Dr. Roshan Singh, for taking the time to discuss your work as a radiation oncologist and for inspiring young girls to consider careers in the STEM fields. I'm so mm -hmm. glad to help.